go ahead and hit that. Wait a few seconds. It finished masking before I even finished my sentence. That's how fast it is. Hey guys, what's going on? In this video, we're going over Lightroom masking and how to use it to make your images 10 times better. Let's go. So real quick, before we even jump into Lightroom, I wanna talk about what masking is. So masking is essentially a way that you can select specific parts of your image and manipulate them. And the settings you can manipulate include things like exposure, contrast, white balance, and a few other similar settings. And the great thing about Lightroom is they offer a bunch of different options on how you can make your selections and create masks, making the entire process super easy. So let's go ahead and jump into Lightroom so I can show you what I'm talking about. So here we are in Lightroom, and once your photos load in, the first thing you'll want to do is jump over to the develop page. Once you're in the develop page, in order to access all the masking options you have available in Lightroom, you have to go up to this circular icon here, that's the masking icon, and go ahead and click on that. And as you can see, like I said earlier, you have a lot of different options on how you can make your selections and create your masks. Now over the last few years, Adobe has been implementing more and more AI technology into their software. And masking in Lightroom is a perfect example of this. And looking at all the masking tools here, the ones that use AI are these three up top, those being subject, sky, background, and then also objects right here, and this people section down here. These other four masking options are more of the traditional masking tools. Now, if you're new to masking, this all might seem really overwhelming, but trust me, it's not as hard as it looks. Just bear with me. So again, Lightroom makes it super easy to create masks. A perfect example of this is this photo of me holding a leaf, and a great masking option is this subject mask. Let's go ahead and hit that. Wait a few seconds. It finished masking before I even finished my sentence. I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm just kidding. We got to finish the tutorial. But yeah, it's super quick. All these AI powered ones usually work really seamlessly and generally make the right selection. Sometimes they mess up, but they normally work pretty good. So as you can see on the photo, we have this red highlight on both my hand and the leaf here. That is our selection. And what I always like to do is zoom in on the mask just so I can make sure it made a good selection. Check around the edges of the leaf, around the edges of my hand there. And yeah, it looks pretty good, so I'll go back to fit. And then from here, I'll go up and click on this check mark that takes away the highlight, but your mask is still there. Don't be fooled. Just because the red's gone doesn't mean your mask is gone too. So now I'll go over here and start making my adjustments. And remember, this is only being applied to the mask. So everything I do here, it's only gonna change what is highlighted in my mask. And you have a lot of things you can play around with here. You have a bunch of tone adjustments, some color adjustments there. You can get real fun, have, have a lot of fun with this, you know, change the color of the leaf entirely in my hand too. You also got this new thing called point color. I haven't really played around with this a lot, but it kind of works similarly to like a HSL slider because you have hue, saturation, and luminance. You can just select specific colors and then change those. And then of course you have your curves. Below that you have effects, which is texture, clarity, dehaze, and green. And then below that, you have detail, which includes sharpness, noise, and a few others. And then up here at the top, you have this amount slider. This is really good for presets. It basically adjusts the overall intensity of the settings you applied. So if you turn it all the way down, you'll see it becomes kind of more dull. And then all the way up, it really intensifies it. Above that, you have this preset drop down. I've never used this, but it's there if you need it. Then at the top, you'll see this tiny invert checkbox. This is actually really useful, for example, if I wanted to make a selection of the background instead of my hand in the leaf here, all you gotta do is hit invert and it changes that selection to the background. As you can see, if I make any adjustments, it's only to the leaves and the trees here. I use this thing all the time. Now another really useful masking feature is let's say we just wanted to select the leaf here. We didn't want to select my hand. All you have to do is go up to this box here. This is your current mask. Click on that and it's going to drop down this plus and minus icon. The plus is for adding to the mask and the minus is for subtracting from the mask. I'm going to hit the minus and it pulls up all these masking options. These are all the same options you have available in the normal masking menu. But I'm gonna use the brush for this situation, and all you have to do is go through and paint away 
any part of the mask you don't want included. And you can even get really specific with it by zooming in and just painting away all those red spots. That looks pretty good to me. And then you can go through, make your adjustments. And then from there, all you gotta do is go up to the masking icon, click on that. It's gonna take you right back to the basic settings panel. Now just a heads up, all the settings you can adjust on your mask are the same settings for every mask option. It doesn't matter which masking method you use, you will always have the same settings available. So now, let's go through all the other masking options. So here we have a nice photograph of all these fall colors and a bright sky. And what I wanna do is select the sky and turn down the exposure a bit. So we'll come over here, click sky, and wait a few seconds. And just like with the subject selection, it just selects out the sky. Now it's not perfect every time. If you go down here, you might notice missed maybe a few spots right there. But for my case, I don't need it to be perfect. This is fine. We'll just turn down the exposure, bring back some of the detail. And I'll go back here, maybe brighten it back up, brighten the whole image up. And that's a much better evenly exposed image. Very simple. Moving on to the next example, we have this background masking tool. I'll click on that and there's the selection. And looking real close, it looks like it accidentally selected my hair a bit and a little bit of my shoe there. No worries though, because we can go back up, use that one tool and subtract the mask. And I actually have this auto mask selected here. This helps when you're trying to fine tune your selection, it helps when you're selecting hair, those sorts of things. And go down to my shoe and finish up that right there. So this background masking tool looks like it did a pretty good job, but let's see if there's any other tools that we can use that might give us a better result. I'm actually gonna jump down to this people section and you'll notice when I hover over this icon here, it selects me. So I'm gonna click on that. But the thing is, I want the background selected in this photo, not me. So after a few seconds, you'll notice you're taken to a different menu here, and you can choose all these different options. You can choose facial skin, body skin, eyebrows. I don't need to go that specific, so I'm just gonna create a mask around the entire person. And then like I said, I need the background selected, so I'm gonna go up here to invert, and it just flips the mask around. Well, let's zoom in and see how well it did. It looks like it might have missed a little bit of my hair there, but maybe did a better job than the background tool. And on my shoe there, where the background tool missed, it actually did a pretty good job on this person selector. So that's something to keep in mind. With all these masking tools, there's a bunch of different methods you can use to get the same or similar results. All right, now let's try out the final AI masking tool, which is objects. So just go over to objects, click on that, and you'll get a cursor. And the best method for using this tool is to paint in the entire subject and it doesn't matter if you overlap your subject just a little bit just make sure you paint over the entire thing and in this case it's this red leaf in the middle and then let it go and it makes a pretty good selection this one's kind of hit or miss it really depends on the situation but just like with all the other ai masking tools it usually helps when your subject has a little bit of contrast with the background. So that's it for all the AI masking tools. Now let's jump into the more traditional masking tools. Starting off, we have the brush. This one's in a lot of Adobe products. It's a classic. So I'm gonna click on that and the cursor turns into something similar to what we had with the object selection tool. So if you look over here in the settings, there's a few different things you can change about the brush, the size, feather, flow, and density. The size is obviously gonna affect how big the brush is. The feather is gonna be how harsh the line is. So right there I have a high feather. That's kind of a softer look. And if I turn it all the way down, it's more of a harsh selection. And then the flow is gonna affect the rate of application of the adjustment. And the density affects the amount of transparency in the stroke. And I normally don't mess with flow and density. Then up at the top you have A, B, and erase. This just sections off different types of brushes. For instance, you could have one brush set really big for A, and then for B, you could have it set really small. So there's B, and then there's A. And then erase, obviously, is gonna erase everything that you made a selection on. Actually, there's kind of a quick trick with this tool if you do wanna erase any selection you just made. So let's just make a brush stroke, and let's say you didn't want that there. All you gotta do is hold down the Alt button on your keyboard 
and it pulls up the erase or subtract brush and then just brush it away. And then the next masking tool we have is the linear gradient. This one's pretty easy. You just have a little cursor there, click and drag anywhere that you want to add the mask. And you can make a few adjustments to this once it's already laid down. You can grab this part here, narrow it in, grab this part here, narrow it in. So those both do the same thing. And then this middle piece moves the whole thing. And then this here at the end, this will rotate the entire mask. But yeah, I use this masking tool all the time. It's perfect for photos like this actually, if you want to maybe turn down some of that brightness peeking in through the trees up there. And that seems like a better even lighting right there. And then I jump back to the main settings bump up the exposure a touch. And I'm not gonna go through this whole image and edit the whole thing, but you get the idea. Then moving right along, we have the radial gradient. This is very similar to the linear gradient. Uh, so you'll click and drag anywhere that you wanna add the mask. Then you have a few different options to adjust it from here. Uh, you can grab the middle and then move the entire thing around. You can grab these edges and push it in, narrow it in, grab this top edge, it's gonna do the same thing, just top and bottom. This little red dot here is gonna feather it out and in. And when I move this, you'll notice off to the right over here, it moves this cursor as well. So this will do the same thing, moving this as moving this. And it's normally really good for situations like this photo. I would invert it and then make it kind of act like a vignette and lower that. Kind of draws the eye in more on this just because everything else around it is darker and then this is brighter here. So yeah, that's kind of how I use the radial gradient. And last but not least, we have the range selector. And within this one, you have a few different range options to pick from. You have color range, luminance range and depth range. So we'll start with color range. And this photo kind of works well for this one. All you have to do is click on a color that you want to select, click and hold actually, drag out an area that you want to select, and it's going to make that selection from that sample color that you gave it. And if you don't like the initial selection Lightroom made for you, all you got to do is go back into the photo, find a different area of color. I'm going to pick this yellow leaf down here click and drag, and it's gonna make an entirely new selection based on that color. Then off to the right, you have this refine slider. Moving it left to right, you'll notice it's gonna change your selection a little bit. So if you move it to the left, you might notice it's kind of gonna narrow in that color a little bit more. So it's gonna get really specific with the colors. But going to the right kind of expands it out over a larger range of colors. So you'll notice you're getting more of these leaves adjusted. But yeah, you probably understand why I don't use this masking tool too often, because if you look at the mask, it kind of missed a few areas right here on the leaf. Whereas if I would have used the object or subject masking tool, it probably would have done a better job selecting that leaf. All right, now let's check out the luminance range. And this works the same way as the color range. You gotta find a sample area of high or low brightness and select that sample area, click and drag, and it's gonna make a selection based off of your sample. Then off to the right, you can make adjustments to your selection. This first indicator here is gonna kind of feather it across your luminance range, and then this indicator kind of makes it a more harsh transition. You can also click and move the entire thing. You can click and drag this and feather it more toward the brighter areas. Just play around with it a bit so you can get used to it and how it works. And then below that, you have this show luminance map. If you click on that, it's gonna show you what your image's brightness looks like across a black and white spectrum. And that is the luminance range. And then you have one more range selector. It's called depth range, but this one's only available for specific image files usually those that are taken in portrait mode on smartphones. So that's an overview of masking options in Lightroom and how you can use them to make your photos 10 times better. Hopefully you learned something today, and if you did and you wanna see more videos just like this one, subscribe to the channel by clicking right here. Thanks for watching, and always remember to capture great moments. Peace.